Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is quickly running over some of the essential commands or the essential Linux terminal commands that you are going to want to know. Now, in general, this video is geared to somebody who is new to the Linux terminal. If you are experienced, chances are you've used all of these, but who knows, there might be one or two commands that you haven't used too often. Without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and run through some of these. Now, the very first one is going to be man. This is the man command. It will allow you to open up the man pages or the manual pages to other commands and utilities. Now, for example, if we do man ls, ls is the list command, hit enter, it's going to give us the manual page for that specific command, including the name, the layout of how this specific command is going to work, as well as the description of the command and then all the different arguments or options that you could do with the command. For example, with this ls command, you could do ls-a, ls-author, ls-b, and here it's gonna list what all those actually do. Now, if you want help, you can hit H or you can hit Q to quit. Now, the very next command is going to be the ping it command. Now, a lot of people use this to go ahead and check to see if they have an internet connection. A lot of people do ping google.com because chances are hopefully google.com is up and available. So if you can ping to google.com, you have an internet connection. Now, a better use case for this uh, specifically for me would be, let's say I wanted to make sure that my media server was up and running. I could go ahead and ping my local IP address, which is .34 hit enter, and then you can see that I am getting a successful connection. Now if I hit control C, and let's ping a server I know isn't running, which is dot .37, hit enter, I'm going to be getting some errors. And you can see here the destination host is not reachable. Control C, that is the ping command, and one thing I will note is if I open up the man page for ping and like any of these other commands that we're gonna be talking about, you can get a lot more information and a lot more of the options and some uh, even more specific and better use cases and options and things like that for all of these commands. Now, one thing that I would like to try is to ping my personal website. So form.techcut.tv and it is running good, it's running perfect, which isn't a surprise because that website is hosted on Linode. And you, you can see it right there, members.linode.com. Linode is the sponsor of this video. All the commands that we talk about in this video, you could go ahead and use on Linode because they're all cloud Linux servers and you do have a ton of different distributions to pick from, from your Ubuntu LTS releases, which is what I usually use, all the way up to hosting your very own Gentoo in the cloud. They also have easy one-click installs for a wide variety of web services, including game servers like Valheim, CSGO, and many more. Being that Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider out there, you're gonna get fantastic uptime, wonderful customer support. Overall, you're gonna have a great experience. And if you're interested in trying Linode today, you can go ahead and use the link in the description or go over to linode.com forward slash tech hut to get a $100 60 day credit. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into some more of these commands here. Now, the next few are gonna be pretty simple. They're just things that you absolutely need to know. And it is CD. CD is how you change your current working directory. With most of these commands, you can actually list out and point to a specific directory. But a lot of the times it's easier to CD into where you want to work in and then start manipulating with things there. So for example, I could go ahead and CD to just forward slash, which will take me to my root directory. I'm not going to get too much into this or the other uh, copy paste move commands. I have separate videos on that that'll be linking down below, but the CD command is definitely worth a mention. Next, what we're gonna do is the cat command, and what cat is gonna do is list the contents of a file, uh, more specifically like configuration files, text documents, things like that. Uh, for example, we have uh, ls up so we can see some of the things that are in this file. Actually, I need to do ls-a to go ahead and, I lied, I need to go back to my home directory, ls-a, to list all the files, and let's say I wanted to see my bash rc file, which is just a configuration for the bash shell that we're currently working in. So I would just type in cat, 
and then do dot bash RC, hit enter, and then it's gonna go ahead and list the contents of that specific file. But there are a bunch of different options that you can see in the man page. An example of an option is if I do dash N, and then I type in bash RC, this is going to list it, but give us number lines, which is uh, very handy if you're looking for something specific, or you need to reference back to a different line at a later time. And that's gonna take us to a command that we can use to actually edit this file, and that is nano. Now, nano is a very simple text editor that comes with most Linux distributions. And for me personally, it works awesome. Uh, a lot of people, especially if you're on forums and things, a lot of people are like, judging what text editor you use. A lot of people will say you should use Vim, this, that, and the other. But for most people, including myself, Nano is more than good enough. It does what I need it to do. I don't spend too much time in terminal-based text editors, but it's very good for quick configuration changes and things like that. So if I type nano bash RC, this is going to open up the nano text editor. And from here, I could actually go ahead and manipulate this file. If we go down to the bottom here, you could see I added NeoFetch and doing this will add NeoFetch every single time I open up the terminal. But just for demonstration, let's say I want to add LS. And down here, you could see all the different uh, shortcuts you could do to get the help page, write it out. You can search for things, cut, copy, paste, repaste. You could go to a specific line. So if I hit command, or control forward slash and I hit the line or column number. Let's say I want to go back up to the top real quick, line six, hit enter, it will take me to line six. Now to go ahead and save this out, just control O, you can see I can write the file name, bash RC, hit enter, control X to close out nano. And then just to show you, if I open up a new terminal instance, you can see not only did it display NeoFetch, but it also displayed that LS command I added to that configuration. Locate is a really simple command that will help you search for files within your file system just by typing in locate and whatever it may be. For example, if I locate iPhone, it's gonna bring up all the files with iPhone in the name within my system as a list. Here we got a mixture of some icons as well as some actual document files. I could be more specific, so if I typed locate iPhone.mp4, I could figure out where that actual file is, and I can see I have two different iPhone MP4s in my videos directory. So if I was looking for that, I would now know where to navigate. So clear that out real quick. Now the next command I wanna talk about is df. And what this is gonna do is show us the amount of available storage we have in our file systems. So if I just type df, you can see it gives us the usage of our specific directories. You can see my root directory currently has 15% in use. And then apparently my audio interface is using 55% of its available storage. Now with this, I recommend opening up the man page. There's a whole bunch of different arguments. So if I do a df-h, this is gonna make it human readable. So if I hit enter, you could see instead of like using blocks, it used a size and it's actually listing the size of these uh, file systems or directories in gigabytes, as well as uh, megabytes and kilobytes. So that's just a little bit more legible. Now the next thing that I'm gonna show you is alias. If I type A-L-I-A-S, alias. Now you can see the current aliases I have set up, uh, C is to clear. That's one of the ones I've used this command to set up. So if I hit C and enter, it's gonna go ahead and clear everything. And to usually do that, you'd actually need to type in clear, but since I set up that alias, that's just something I don't need to do anymore. Now, just an example of me using this command, for example, I don't believe Neo is a command, which it's not. So if I wanted to, I could do alias, and then I could do Neo equals Neo fetch. Now, if I type in Neo, it's gonna open Neo Fetch. It's just a cool little thing, especially if you constantly are typing in a specific command with various arguments and options and things like that. It's much easier to make an alias for that, so it's really easy to come back to that specific command. And the very last command for this video is simply going to be exit, and that is gonna go ahead and close out our terminal. Now, if you did like this style of video where I run through all these different commands, please let me know. There are definitely a lot more that we need to check out, and I would love to make more of these for you, so please let me know down below. With that, I'd love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Sledgehammer, Phil Matt, Kyle, Timo Anthony, and Chris 
Curtis. Thank you guys for supporting the channel and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. And thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. Again, go ahead and use the link down in the description to get your $100 60 day credit to go ahead and play around with the server side of Linux, which is my personal favorite side of Linux. So with that, have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.